What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Judgmental Russell Fest episode. I'm back here with my cousin again. What's up, Josh? What's up, man? What's going on? Now, how's everything down there? Well, everything, everything going cool, man. I said just chilling. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of stuff, you know, in the works for, for me. Just, man, that's not relaxed, man. How you feel? Yeah, everything's good over here. Uh, we were supposed to do this last week, but <laughs> with all the reports and stuff coming out, it was better to do it this week. <laughs> well, we're going to start off with uh, WWE pay-per-view, uh, Castle, uh, Class at the Castle, Principality Stadium, and Card Off Wells. Um, I didn't watch the kickoff show, did you? No, I didn't. Um I couldn't even tell you who was a, who was yeah. a wrestler. I, I think it was an eight-man tag, but I'm not necessarily for sure, though. It was uh, Mocap Moss and Street Profits defeated Austin Theory and Alpha Academy when Montez Ford Frost Spats Gable. Uh, I was wondering... Well, I'll get to that when we get there. All right, the no. start of the show, we got Damage Control, which is Bailey, uh, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky. Versus Bronca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka. Uh, Damage Control won. Uh, it, there was a spot there. Did you notice it when uh, EO Sky was holding Alexa's leg? And it was like that beef pause. I think Alexa mm-hmm. messed up. And, and mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I said, damn, that kinda, was weird. Kind of bot- botched it hard. But like yeah. I said, with, the, with the atmosphere, they didn't care. Like, mm-hmm. you know. You know, that that was one of the biggest gates that right. that, that stadium's ever seen. So there was there was hype for them. There was hype for the jump. You could have made twenty botches in in that match and it would have been pop, it would have been popping. So Exactly. You know. And and props to the crowd, like you mentioned, because it made it feel like it was a major event. Yeah. And, um and, what last time last time they had they had a show was over 30 years ago, SummerSlam made a mm-hmm. uh, uh Davey Boy Smith, British Bulldog versus Bret the Hitman Hart for the for the IC title. And, and that was a classic. So Right. Uh they need to do this uh more often. Not not in Wales, but just somewhere, you know, uh, overseas right away because the the crowd just made it just feel like it was just like so I guess like you just said since they didn't haven't had one that long they were just happy happy to have one. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. What happened was uh, Eo Sky hit a moonsault and Bailey had covered uh B- Bel Air for the win. Um, I know you noticed that um that uh Bel Bel uh Bailey didn't um was barely in the match until the end when she pinned Belair for the uh when she pinned Belair. They they uh had a um they had their spot. Their spot was towards the end of the match. And when she pinned uh Belair, I said to myself, oh they must be setting up for uh for a title match at Survivor Series. I don't think uh, uh Extreme Rules is like a B a B show. So I'm thinking it's yeah. gonna be more of a Survivor Series. I, I I can I can I can I can only imagine that. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, stream rules and yeah. Uh, Survivor Series, yeah, grand. Uh, I call my granddaddy show, but yeah, I agree with you. 100%. Right. Percent. Right. Uh, the match was uh, thirteen minutes and twenty seconds, by the way. Uh, next was a video of Tyson Fury gre- greeting Drew McIntyre. Uh, the crowd went crazy when Fury came on when they saw Fury on the air. Mm-hmm. Old next, championship boxer. Yeah. Next match is Gunter beat Sheamus. When Sheamus went for the bro kick, but his back gave out. He was working on uh, the back the whole match. Uh, Gunner hit a power bomb and hit him with a lariat for the win. Good match there too. So that's two good matches in a row. Man, let me tell you about that. Um, I was reading reviews for it. Dave Meltzer, if you don't, if you don't know who he is, you in, in the wrestling world, you're living under a rock. They, he gave that five stars. So yep, yeah, like, that's like the perfect match. But that was a hard hitting match. Sheamus 
chest was deep the hell red. Yep. But it was good though. It was good. Yeah, uh, and I'm. They need to do more with Sheamus too, by the way. Because after this, how can you go back to the to, to be on the B side? <laughs> well, well, I think I think what they're gonna do. I think what they're gonna do with Sheamus. He he's gonna chase for the IC title. Um, they they made it they made it abundantly clear that he's the one IC title away from an ultimate Grand Slam champion. Yes, they kept mentioning it over and over again, right? Yeah. So, and you know what though, he to me right now in the WWE is probably the most underrated superstar that they have on the roster. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Ricochet, Ricochet. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. He's the most underrated wrestler. To win championships. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, to win heavyweight championships. All right. Uh, I'm gonna clear. I'm gonna clarify that. My bad. All right. So, uh, Leon Edwards was at ringside again, and also Big Pop. Leon Edwards just won. Just just had won the uh, uh, welterweight championship UFC with that uh, kick of uh, four minutes in a in a fifth the fifth round, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I think it was four minutes. Uh yeah. yeah, so they 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 went crazy for him when he showed up on the air. Props to the crowd again. Next match we got SmackDown Women Champion Liv Morgan beat Shayna Baszley when Morgan hit the cold breaker and the oblivion for the win. I said to myself like, damn, that was just such a good laid out match. Um, I think the people there were um Paulie Paulie was there. I was about to call him Paulie Dangerously. Paul Heyman was there. He didn't show up on camera. Michael P.S. Hayes, and it was someone else that uh, did all the, uh, um, they don't call it layout matches. They just call it agents, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think those were the agents. It's, I'm missing someone else, too, that was an agent there. Well, well job for the, to, to uh, three of them, because I think, I can't remember who the third agent was. Well, props to them, because every match so far was solid. The good oh, yeah. to solid, and this was this was laid out just because I was like, oh, most of the time I don't really talk about uh, since we've been doing this stuff. I really don't talk about WWE stuff because most of the time I always fast forward it. I always just watch like the main event or something like that. But between the crowd and the way they laid out these matches, this was probably one of the best pay per views WWE pay per views I've seen since like what? Uh, I can't say WrestleMania, <clears throat> but that's that's two days. Uh, two days, so I, I can't say WrestleMania. Now, this is one of the best pay reviews I've seen in a while from WWE. And, and here's the thing, though. Here, here's the thing, and like I, I hope to expand on it later. Uh, with the regime change that that's been going on, you know, Vince McMahon retiring, Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan moving up, and Triple H running the wrestling, um, the wrestling, um, um, the executive vice president of wrestling operations. You can see an emphasis on pro wrestling now mm-hmm. in the WWE. Like I said, with with Vince McMahon, and you know, it's it's more. It was more in a, entertainment, especially in the last four years. You know the Thunder Dome and all that, but right. now you know you, you got live, you got the live events and Triple H. He's focusing, he's focusing this on on the wrestling, and it, it's it's paying off, it's paying off dividends right now. So. Right, right. Uh, next match was Edge and Rey Mysterio beat Judgment Day, which is Finn Balor and Damian Priest at twelve twenty five when Edge spared Balor for the win. I felt that uh, a twelve twenty five hour. I said, yeah. Uh, Dominic turned on Edge and Ray. See, this is the problem that uh, WWE. See, they we already knew that they was going to turn that they wanted to turn Dominic on Ray because they kept mentioning it on uh, the dirt sheets and the, mm-hmm. the websites all the time. But they never did anything on TV about it that make him mm-hmm. seem like he was going to turn. See, this is the thing about this is why I like AEW's angles because. Uh, they do like one of those slow builds. Mm-hmm. They do a slow build, and you already know what's going to happen. But I'd rather see a slow build than 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 Dominic just turning on on uh, Ray Mysterio and Edge like that. 
The all, I, yeah, and I agree with you. I agree with you. The um, we like I said, I knew it was. We I, we all knew. Like I said, a blind man could have seen that coming, but you know, we just didn't know when and how quick. Yeah. So, I I honestly thought that he was gonna do it a, a month ago when, you know, or a couple weeks ago with Edge, but you know. It was it uh, the match. Otherwise, was a good match. Yeah, like, it, it looked like Edge Edge has has not lost a step since you know he came back and stuff. So you know, shout out to him though. Right. Uh, I also said it was a good match, but I just thought it was too short. And with uh, having Rey Mysterio in a match, he can he can never have a bad match because he's mm-hmm. always uh you know who reminds me of uh Rey Mysterio. Uh, Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels yeah. isn't isn't Curry man no more, but he's just just so solid in the ring, and he's always mm-hmm. in the right spot. He's always and in the he, right spot. Uh, an ageless wonder. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Match of the night. Uh, I I don't know. It could be it it could be either or. The main event of this one, we got Seth Rollins beat Matt Riddle in seventeen minutes and twenty seconds. When Rollins hit a stomp off the second turnbuckle for the win, it was two stomps he did, and it hit two of them for the win. Uh, can't get no excellent than that. What did what did uh, Meltzer give this? I think he gave it. I think he gave it a four out of five. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, like I said, it was it was it was a it was a it was a good match. Mm-hmm. Um, it it was a real good match. Uh, I just wish that uh, I just like I said I just I want to I, I want to see them do more with with Riddle and Rollins. Like I think they got a couple more uh, five event uh, shows that they can do. So all right, are we going uh, an extreme? Good out here's a good idea. A stream rules match in a cage, like like a uh, well we can't say an octagon because you know it's in a in the ring you can't do that. But let's have like a covered like a dome cage maybe. Do you remember right. they did it? They didn't they kind of do a match like this uh, on uh, NXT. Um, what was yeah. it? Um, uh, was Lions, ma- Alliance then? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A fight pit match. A fight pit match. Right. Was Matt Riddle involved in that match? Yes, he was. Okay, yes, yeah, he okay. Was. Yeah. So there you go. They already got the equipment right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so but, but I, I think that would, I think that would be a good one. I I think that would be a perfect send off and Rollins I I will hope Rollins go over where you know Rollins can like go for go for a title. Yeah, they're going to have to because, uh, well, Brock is a part-timer. Um, Roman Reigns is, like we talked about before, he's probably, give him another year, he might be in movies. And uh, they need to uh, bring some of these guys up. Like you said, um, Rollins is the heel. Riddle, Riddle's the face. Yeah. Uh, who else? Oh, Austin Theory, of course. Uh, I think Austin Theory should win a title with this uh, uh, with this uh, Money in the Bank briefcase. I think he eventually will, but I don't think I don't think he'll be in in the year twenty twenty two. Oh, so what about twenty uh, three? Most definitely, I think he'll win it. I think he's gonna pull. I think they're gonna build him to, for Seth Rollins. They're gonna. Mm-hmm. He's gonna. Pull it off at WrestleMania. Okay, so you think Seth Rollins can win the title in uh, 2022? And no, uh, Austin, Seth Roll- oh, no, Austin Theory is going to win the title at, at 2020 at the WrestleMania, at best WrestleMania. Oh, okay. I think, um, I, I personally want Austin Theory uh, stock to rise up. Uh, right. Um. Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, you know he he can he can go as far as he wants to right now. Like I said, his 
Like, like I say, he he right now he can't go wrong with his gimmick, how he, how he, how he performs in the ring, how he performs outside the ring. He can't go wrong. Um, so don't don't think the only thing he missing is a strap. And I think he can. I think he can do it. Um, right. But, but you'll want someone like uh, Austin Theory, or, you know, stop to continue to go up. You know, in route to WrestleMania for him to win the title. Right. Uh, main event time. We got uh, Drew McIntyre. We got Roman Reigns beat Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre had the one match one. He hit the spear and hit the Claymore kick. Uh, someone showed up in the hood, pulled them off, and it was Solo Sikori, which is Uso's younger brother. They finally bore him into the uh, into the fold as the bloodline. Uh, crowd went crazy. Oh, I forgot. Um, Austin Theory had showed up and wanted to bring uh, use his briefcase, but Tyson Fury got up and punched him in the face, and the crowd just went absolutely crazy for that one. Then it was the uh, the end. What we were talking about when uh, Solo sh- showed up. Um, Brains won with the spear after when he showed up and he got in uh, Drew McIntyre's face, and uh, Roman Reigns hit the spear for the win. Uh, thirty minutes and thirty nine seconds. Excellent match. Excellent match. It was. It was. Um, I've always said. You, I've always said the style makes fights. Um, and you got two powerhouses. One 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 is more polished than the other. That being McIntyre. But it was, like I said, it was a knockout, drag out brawl, like it sh- like it should have been. So. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I will. You could you couldn't go wrong whoever whoever won that match. Um. Like I said, you you would love to see McIntyre win it in in his home uh, in his home basically home arena right in Wales, but even though he's from Scotland. Uh, but like I say, you want to you still want to see Roman Roman Reigns uh, retain to show off his sheer dominance. Now uh, you add uh, Solo Sequoia, um, uh, the the, the young, one of the, the youngest of um, Rikishi's uh, kids. Yes. But yeah, he's yeah he's the youngest one, and he looks like he's in. Like I said, he he's been an absolute beast in, in NXT. Yes. Uh, so I think, like I said, you couldn't go wrong either way. Who you know who got the pinfall that uh in that in that match? So. Like I said, that whole show, that whole show showcased pro wrestling and and, and entertainment, not just right. not entertainment slash pro wrestling. So exactly, you know. yeah. So yeah, I can't say enough. Good good show by WWE. That one. Uh, like yeah. I said, I I don't talk about uh, <coughs> WWE much because I most of the time most of the stuff I fast forward and just look at the main event. But this one, I looked all the way through it. I watched all the way through it. So this was a good pay-per-view here. All right. Mm-hmm. Next up, we got AEW All Out. Now Arena, Chicago, Illinois. Did you look at the Zero Hour? I did not. I did not. Okay. Work. Okay, we got the AAA World Mixed Tag Team Champion. Sammy Guerrero and Tay Melo beat Ortiz and Ruby Solo. When Tay hit her Tay KO on, on Soho for a win, which is a knee, she kneed her in the face and broke her nose. Uh, I don't know. The way to, it kind of ended weird. I don't know if that's how it was supposed to end, but uh, uh, she broke her nose and laid down there and needed help to get to the back. Um, the Ruby, Ruby Soho. Yeah. But uh, okay, match. I don't like how they do these mixed matches now because you notice that the the women can hit the men, but the men can't hit the women. Yeah. Yeah. So if it, if you can't do it both ways, then just don't have it at all. I'm about to say pick a lane. Exactly. <laughs> you, pick a lane. Exactly. Uh, next match. Next match in zero hour. The for the FTW Championship hook he. To beat D'Angelo Parker, which is the second half of 
in four minutes and 19 seconds. Hook won with the red rum. Uh, after the match, Parker and Maynard try to attack Hook and Axon Bronson, who, whose theme song that Hook uses, chase uh, Maynard and Parker away. Solid match, but it was real short. Um, Hook, this is one of Hook's first times, like, really selling. And, we, mm-hmm. well, you know, Ange- Angelo Parker is solid anyway, so... So the, yeah. the match was it was it was a solid good match, but it was just too short. Well, you know, most of his matches are short. I was anyway. about to I was about to say <laughs> the way they got hooked, he, he he's not he's not going to stay in the ring long. <laughs> right. <laughs> like like I said, um, you know he's going he's going to run through him. But I was a, I, I'm an action roster fan ever since um he he came out that he came out with a song Ron Simmons off uh. <laughs> blue, blue chips. Uh huh. Uh. So so I guess you like. Uh, well, we'll we'll get to that one when when we get there. Uh. So for the AEW All Atlantic Championship, Pac defeated Kip Sabian nine nine minutes fifty seven seconds with the Pac one with the Black Arrow, which is uh. Well, how would you say it was a, a somersault? Uh, off a, the top rope. How would you? A court screw. Um. A court screw. Uh. Shoot. Star press. Yeah. Um, I don't know why the hell Kip Sabian gets a title shot, and the crowd, yeah. the crowd really wasn't into this one. But the match, the match was okay. But you could have found someone else better to get a, a title shot. He just comes out of nowhere and gets a damn title shot. I, I, I didn't get that one. Let, let's just be clear about okay. Let's just be clear about the uh about the the show in general. I mean, we can we can go through the matches and you know t- and say how good and how bad they were. Right. But that was um they we should have paid for the medium scrum after the match. <laughs> oh yeah, we we gonna get we gonna get to that. We I'm, gonna get I'm to just that. saying. I'm, just, <laughs> I, I'm we definitely gonna talk about it. But we could have we should have paid for the medium scrum and got all out for free. That's True. what I'm saying. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, nah. I um, I like I, I watched the highlights. I saw the highlights of it. I said, I don't know why they would give Kip Sabian a uh, um a title shot. You know, he's been out for what, almost a year. Right. I I guess that's that was kind of the direction that uh, you know, they wanted to go, but. I, I don't. I don't know. Like I said, Kip Seaman is, is, is a solid competitor. I, I mean, and it was a good. I mean, as far as I can tell, it was a good match. Yeah, the match wasn't bad. It's it just that the crowd didn't know what to take from it because, like you said, they haven't seen Kip in a year. Yeah. And then he comes out with the paper bag on his head and all that. So yeah. you know, yeah. So uh, other than that, the match was fine. Hmm. All right, next match, we got Eddie Kingston defeated uh, Tommaso Ashiri, 13 minutes, 43 seconds. Kingston won with a Nora Lights bomb. Great old school New Japan strong style match. And that's Eddie Kingston's favorite um, wrestling style. I, 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 obviously, you can tell by the way he uh, wrestles. That's, yeah. that's his uh, style. Um, he probably loved every minute going against Ashiri, a so... Great match, a uh, great way to, and this should actually should have been on a pay per view, but yeah, uh, yeah they, this well, this match yeah, should have well, been on pay. Go ahead. Well, it, it should, it, okay, it should have been, it, it should have been Kingston versus Go, Sammy Guevara. Um, <laughs> not, but, but if you've seen the reports, yes. I mean, you've seen the reports and stuff. King Eddie Kingston got suspended for. Putting his hands on, uh, putting his hands on, um, on Sammy Guevara because Sammy Guevara, uh, I guess, cut a promo and he didn't like it. Mm-hmm. But you know, kids, kids get butt hurt and you know, spaz out, spaz out, and uh, spaz out on him. So he kind of, yeah, he kind of. He can kind of mess himself up, but at the same time, but at the same time, you know, uh, 
but at the same time, he like I say he, he did himself did himself a favor while by, by, by that by wrestling at a new Japan superstar. Right. That's exactly what he is. Mm-hmm. Um, Ishii is a uh, is a superstar. Right. Uh, in New Japan. So, I love I love I love watching I love watching Eddie Kingston work. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, he, he's, he's a big man. He's, he's he's tough. He's rugged. You know. He hits. He's a strong style wrestler. He knows his history of strong style. He's he, I love his work. So you know. That, but that should have been a pay per view match. That should have been on the show. Yes, yes, it should have. Yes. All right, now the main card show starts. We got the Unified Joker won a casino ladder match at 14 minutes and 15 seconds. The casino ladder match is kind of, would you say it's like the Royal Rumble where ladders and the casino chip is up in the air that they have to get? <coughs> yeah. um, I hate. Uh, uh, I hate battle royals and I hate ladder matches because you haven't you seen the uh, spot where they just stand on a ladder. <laughs> they're moving the ladder and everything and they're just standing at that same spot and, and never yeah. move. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I ain't a fan of uh, ladder matches. I hate them. I like I'm I'm a fan of them to an extent. But like I say, you know, it's 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 cheesy. When um, it's cheesy when they just stand there, you know, they try to try to pull pull, pull something. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I I get where you're coming from wholeheartedly. All right. And when I uh when that under unidentified Joker uh one, I was like, uh oh, I already know who this is, but we we'll get to that when we get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the AEW World Trios Championship, we got the Elite. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks versus Hangman Page in the Dark Order, Alex Reynolds and John Silvers. 17 minutes and two seconds. Uh, oh, Silver set up Omega for the buckshot, but Omega rolled out of the way and Page smashed Silver, allowing Omega to cover for the win. I wrote down best match so far tonight, which was really wasn't saying much. I mean, it was a good match, but you know, calling it the best match so far. Uh, it was better than than uh, Kingston. It was better than the Kingston match. That comes second. So, far. <coughs> but yeah, what was your thoughts? It okay. We knew we knew the trajectory looking at the uh, tournament brackets, but it should have been. Kenny Omega and the Bucks versus Ozzy Open and Will Ospreay in the fight. Yes, yeah. And have here's a question: Has Will Ospreay ever won a match in AEW yet? No. Yeah, yes. that's it. Yes, he oh. had. Yes, he okay. has. Okay. Yes, All he right. has at Forbidden Door. Okay. Yes, he has against All Orange right. Cassidy. But, but with that being, oh yeah, I, I forgot about that one, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but we like I said the. The match, I, I hate. I, I hate to say it, it was predictable as, as as it come. We knew the outcome of what was going to happen. Yes. yes, yeah, it was a it, yes, it was a good match. It was a solid match. Um, but that that shouldn't have been the trio's finals. That should that should have that should have belonged to the United Empire um, mm-hmm. versus the Elite. But like I said, you know. I don't. I don't want to call it lazy storytelling, but I'm leaning towards that only because, you know, we uh, yeah, um, yeah. It was it was just late to me. It was kind of like lazy storytelling. Like I said, we if if you look at the brackets, like I said, it's just we we. I saw it. I saw it. You know, and then when. I guess when even Uno got hurt then or uh Dark Order number ten got hurt, the fight was pretty much on the wall. So Right. And uh have you noticed now and they started the little how you was talking about the storytelling. 
they started with uh, Omega, not 100%. Mm-hmm. Now, miraculously, he's healed. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like he got the uh, you know the fountain of youth or whatever or right know, he's, he's, he's healed <laughs> by the holy power I don't know right <laughs> but, well it was I mean like I said the, the match was good mm-hmm. I'm, not, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not disputing the fact that the match the match wasn't what it was spoke was what it was supposed to be. I'm just saying that it sh- that shouldn't have been the match that should have been on pay per view. That's all I'm saying. Right. All right. Next up for the T- TBS Championship, we got my girl Jay Carhill, who dressed as She Hulk, beat Athena four minutes and forty seconds. Uh, Jay reversed the springboard into a bicycle kick. And it hit Jade for the win. A uh, good match, but it was a lot of botches in it. And here's another thing I noticed. Have you noticed that, um, well, the claim is is coming up next to the claim. These these are their homegrown talents, Cargill and the claim. You notice they've gotten better, or is it just me? Um the acclaim, I, like I said, I love, I, I, I love the acclaim as a tag, as, as the tag team, their continuity and stuff. Jay Cargo, you could tell from day one how raw she was, but you know, as time as time has been going on, her move set has gotten a lot better. Um, like I said, she's getting advice from Brian Danielson, and, um, from all the other, um, all the other. I guess you can say veterans of the locker room, but yeah. Right. Old Cargill and, and uh the acclaim has gotten a lot better. Yes. Um uh as far as, you know, the wrestling IQs and stuff. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that and, oh and that's and that's no shot at Athena. Like I said, you know, Athena, like I said, she 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 could go too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but see, see, this is why Rampage, and I know somewhere down the line they're going to do it. That Rampage needs to be uh two hours, or now you know they're they're uh, I don't know if they're still in talks with uh is something going on with Tom Warner and and uh who's looking for sports programming? Is it HBO? I think so. Um, now, like, is that's still going on, right? Yeah, um, I think they're. I think they're. They're under the um, the Warner Discovery umbrella. You know. Uh, yeah. TNT, TBS, HBO, and um, all that and stuff. So. Yeah, like I, uh, I was telling someone at work um the other day. You. You have all these networks and stuff. Yes, you could probably yeah you could make you could probably make Rampage two hours, but you would. Have, but the problem, what the problem, kind of with that is, is that Rampage is a tape show because it runs. I don't know if it runs before uh, Dynamite or after Dynamite. Right. Because you know because they got that because you know they still they got that dark elevation. Uh, uh, pro, um, they do on YouTube and stuff, right? What I'm, what I told, what I told my coworkers and stuff, if you, if if they if they're gonna do anything right now, they need to find they need to find a they need to find a network for a Ring of Honor. Um, like I said, it's I I almost want to say it's like. The stepchild of the stepchild of um of all elite wrestling, right? So you got you got all these ridiculously good athletes, but you know, and and you and and you got a supreme commentator, um, Caprice Coleman, uh huh, that can moonlight, that can also moonlight as a wrestler too for ROH. But yeah, he's, have, he's he wrestles on uh, NWA. Yeah, but you, but yeah, but you, but you, um, 
you have you have nowhere to put them right now. So right. you have all this talent that's untapped. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Untap and you don't have nowhere to put them at. That just right now to me it just don't make sense. So true. Uh, next up, we got uh, Warlow Goldberg and FTR <laughs> beat <laughs> Jay Lethal and a motor shooter machine guns. Alex Shelley <clears throat> and Chris Sabian. Warlow got the pin on Lethal after his uh, power bombs. It was four of them. A uh, good match, but oh, oh, I forgot to say that Samoa Joe showed up with Dax's daughter and chased uh, Sanjay Dutton him away. Um, it was solid, but see, this this match shouldn't have been on pay per view. It was a good match. We already knew if Warlow was involved in the match, we already know how how it's going to go. Yeah, because you know War, Warlow isn't going to do much, and they're not going to have him lose. Mm-hmm. So we already knew what the what Lethal and the Machine Guns was there for. And they're good wrestlers, so you know they're going to have to make them make him look good. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it, this this is the one that should have been on uh, the zero hour. Yeah, and but I think they want to. Sh- I, I I think they want to showcase the machine guns <laughs> on <laughs> AEW, which we all know that we are. Every wrestling fan knows that the machine guns are good, right? In Impact or, or wherever they, wherever they, you know, wrestle that. Um, I say it to. I'm like you. It was a throwaway match. You know, mm-hmm. I think it was just something to fill time. But like, you, yeah, and you know, uh, Warlow is. They want to keep him strong. They want to keep him real. They want to keep him real strong. Uh. You know, FTR, you know, we all know, we all know they, they're they that good, so. Right. Uh, I, you know, and like you said, they got, they had Jay Lethal and Samoa Joe, you know, more ROH guys that really don't have no kind of, you know, sense of direction on what they're going to do, do with them. As far as television time, so yeah, that's what we. I'm going in circles again with you know putting putting RH as their own separate show. So right. Next up, we have Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Ricky Starts five minutes and twelve seconds. Once Hobbs won with a spine spine buster, I wrote down, "Is this a squash match?" Question mark. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was. And you know what though? I, you know what though? And it, it, it just struck me. It, it just they need to put Warlow and, and versus Powerhouse Pops. I think I think those two. I think those two can do a lot of uh, do a lot of good together against each other. So right. So are you going to have a uh, Warlow losing and selling? He would have to sell, right? Both of them would have to sell. You know, I would think. I would think. You know, they. Yeah, they would have to. Yeah, I, I would. The, the okay, they should have like a uh uh like a King's Road style uh storyline. You know, three three matches in the, in the course of four months, but mm-hmm. you know, Hobbs. He's Warlow by by disqualification. Now Hobbs is chasing after Warlow for the TNT title. So I mean, um, I think they, I think that would be, I think they, those two work good together. As far as you know, the aesthetics of you know face heel uh, of a face heel situation. Now, what you doing with Ricky Starks? Ricky, uh, I I don't know. I don't know what Starks. Right now, I feel like Starks is is between a rock and a hard place. Yes. You know he he's got the talent. He's got the goods, but right now they don't they don't have a real a real spot for him. You know, as far as 
putting them putting them putting them in with somewhere. I I I would I would think that uh starts would be good if you know if he tried to get recruited by Stoke Stokely Hathaway. Uh-huh. You know, starts starts the climbs now. You know, they're gonna people wanna run up on him and try to try to, you know, beat him or whatever. And but right now, but as, as right now for the near future, I just don't see you know anything as anything right now as far as uh, Ricky Stark is concerned. Right. Next up, AEW World. Um, yeah, yeah, AEW World Tag Team Championships. Swerving our glory, glory beat the acclaim. Slurvin our glory, uh, twenty-one minutes. Slurvin our glory won with the Doomsday Double Stomp, which is a, a double stomp. Uh, um, Keith Lee holds the guy on his shoulders, and Swerve comes off the top rope with a double stomp. Kind of, kind of like the Doomsday Doomsday that the Royal Warriors do, but instead of a clothesline, he does a, a foot stomp. Uh, like, like I said, this was the best match I've seen the claim in, and see. With the claim, I normally fast forward them. I like the intro, but other than that, I normally fast forward them. But this match was actually good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know why they lost that match? Why? Uh, well, off the Ash, uh, off the Ash uh, Stadium is what two weeks from now, or yes. a week and a half from now. That's that's where Max Cash is from. So I'm uh, if like I said if I was if I was a betting man mm-hmm. I would think that they I would think that they would make the acclaim the tag team champions and Arthur Ashe put them in a put them in the main event for the tag team titles. It'll probably it'll, I don't think it'll yeah it's on ramp it'll be on no it's on um it'll be dynamite two weeks from now I think that and I think they're pulling main event duty that night so. Right, and did you notice that uh, the crowd went nuts when the acclaim had uh, got the intro? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they was said, they know, very they, into the match. Go yeah, ahead. like I said, the the acclaim the acclaim is the acclaim is yeah they yeah their their rhymes are corny. I mean yeah, yeah <laughs> rhymes are corny, but you know it resonates with the crowd. Like I said, even when they were heels, you know. <laughs> They didn't come off his heels because you know of their you know because Max Castle was rapping and you know Anthony Bone was doing his stupid stupid thing but uh, I they are I think they will be tag team champions in a couple weeks so yeah mm-hmm. next up AEW Women's World Championship Tony Storm beat Dr Britt Baker Jamie Hayner and Akira uh, how do you pronounce her name last name um. Shakira, uh, I mean, yeah, Shakira uh, Okada. Okay. 14, 14 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, Storm won with a DDT on Haydner. Uh, I wrote a good match and a right person won. The yeah, right it, person yeah, won. It, yeah, it was a real good match and the right person won. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we all predict it. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, you see that. It, yeah. Um, it, it, it was... It was the right move for to make Tony Storm the interim champion, mm-hmm. but um, they they need to get rid of that interim that interim thing that they got going on at AEW. Yes, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yes, they are, they, they are beating they are beating that mess with a dead with a dead horse right now. Right. There there was a um I don't I guess this may have been on YouTube. Well they showed it on uh Dynamite uh, uh last week that uh Haydner and uh Britt Baker was arguing backstage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I said good good because they need to get rid of uh get rid of them two together because Haydner yeah. Haydner needs a push. Haydner needs a push. Oh, and another thing I, I forgot to mention about that um that triple A uh uh intergender uh match with the um Ortiz. They need Ortiz needs to push also. He needs to get out of uh um get out of anything with, with uh Sammy Guerrero and no more no more uh ma- mixed tag team matches for him. He needs to push also. Some sort of push. 
he need to get Santana back. That's what he needs. Him. Well, well, didn't Santana. they say he wasn't coming back? Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. And but and it but it doesn't look right. It doesn't. It doesn't look right. If I was Tony Khan right now, I would try to get Santana back, uh, and have and eventually have them go for a tag team title, uh, tag team titles again, like they should have did a year and a half ago. Right. Right. Next up, we got uh, Christian Cage defeated Jungle Boy Jack Perry, thirty three seconds. Luchasaurus turned on Jungle Boy and choke slammed him on the steel grates in the ramp. And uh, uh, did he power bomb him through a table or choke slam him through, him through a table? He uh, choke slammed him. He choked not not through a table. But he choke slammed him onto the onto a metal onto the metal grate that mm-hmm. was sitting right beside, sitting right next to this uh, stage. Okay, so. uh, dr- dragged him in the ring, and Christian hit the kill switch for the win. Uh, angle match. I can't really put a, a, a thing on. It was only 33 seconds. That wasn't for, for Angle. We already knew Luchasaurus was going to turn on him anyway. Yeah. Um. The re- but the report, the, there's a report that Christian Cage may have torn his uh, tricep. That's um. That's why you. That's why he had that um brace on his arm. Uh huh. So. so you know they pro- they probably want. I I think you know that that was an unforeseen injury, but that was an injury that uh um that happened way before then, or well before you know the match or whatever. But you know it's we I was I ain't gonna lie, I was kind of surprised. I was I was gonna see Luke Source turn on on Jungle Boy again. Uh uh-huh. but, but it, I I think it's gonna make a good day versus the light story with um Jack Perry and uh Luchasaurus. So Right. Next match, Chris Jericho beats Brian Danson. Jericho low blow Brian Danson for the win, twenty two minutes fifty nine seconds. A uh, good match, but I didn't like the finish. The finish was horrible, and I wrote down. Uh, ang- was it, could you consider this an angle match? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Only because only because of uh, Daniel Garcia, which right. last week beat Will Willa Yuta for the uh, ROH Pure Title. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that yeah that is an angle match. Which is going to happen either between Danielson and Jericho again, or or Garcia and Jericho? <clears throat> yeah, uh, did good match, but the finish, uh, they could have done something better than that. But like you said, it was just an angle, and especially at the end with a low blow when he was walking back, and uh, Garcia gave him that look, mm-hmm. like like why would you do that look? Uh, next up, we got Darby, Ang- Darby Island Sting and Merrill beats House of Black, 13 minutes and 25 seconds. Uh, Sting hit, hit a miss, <laughs> hit a miss on Balakai, and Darby uh, put on the uh, Last Supper cradle for the win. But I wrote down, uh, where was the Black Mist? Because you couldn't even see it when Sting hit. <laughs> no, uh, it'll probably just spit. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, good good match, but this was uh, Malachi's uh, last match. Uh, he's yeah. going on a, a hiatus. Um, he didn't leave the company, but he just uh, going through some stuff, so he'll be going. Uh, main event now. We got the main event that everybody's talking about. We got CM Punk for the AEW World Championship. CM Punk beats John Maxey. 20 minutes and three seconds. Punk hit two GT, uh, GTSs, go to sleep, which is a, a knee. Uh, uh, what you call it? Um, uh, a, fire, a fireman carry. Car- yeah, uh, to, a, to a, to a, to a, to a uh, face, uh, face crusher with a knee. So. Right. So after the match, the voicemail plays with Tony Khan uh, talking to MGF. Wonder uh, MJF. I said MGF. 
MJF wanted to bring him back. And yes, the mask joker was MJF. I said I knew it. As soon as I saw that mask guy in the back and, and sitting over there, I said that has to be MJF. It has to. A uh, good match, by the way, between uh, CM Punk and John Moxie. This is why I like when John Moxie is wrestling <coughs> like this. I, I don't like all that garbage shit. He does it too much, in my opinion. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I. That was a good match. It was, you know, scientific match. I just don't understand the blood. You know, um. Uh, I don't understand them blading, blading for the match and, and all that. Right. I don't, it, it, if it was once in the blue moon, I can see it. But you do it every match. No, you don't have yeah. to. Yeah. No. Uh. Uh-uh. And they need to get out of that, and they need to get out of that quick. Yes. I said, you know, blade. You know, blading works on on. Uh, I would think it's special occasion, and don't get me wrong, you know, a title match is a pseudo special occasion, but it looked like if you're with John, either John Moxley or CM Punk, someone someone's bleeding, and right? They just need they need to stop that quickly, right? Okay, now this is what you were talking about after the match. There was a media scrum. <laughs> And our boy CM Punk, our boy CM Punk was going off on uh, uh, Coca Cabana. Coca Cabana, who still works there, he was in uh, Germany with the uh, video game, uh, video game show GamersCon. Was that was the uh, yeah. show called? Yeah, GamersCon. Uh, so he was doing stuff for the video game there. So he wasn't at the pay per view. So people are trying to say that that he's uh, trying to uh, blackball him. I guess would you use the term, trying to yeah. blackball Coca Cabana. Well, uh, here's a little clip of a uh, <laughs> CEO Pope. My time, and this is a fucking business. Uh, why I'm a grown ass adult man, and I decide not to be friends with somebody is nobody else's fucking business, but my friends if I fall backwards, we'll catch me. Scott Colton. I felt, uh, Scott Colton is a Coca banner. Never would have. My problem was I wanted to bring a guy with me to the top that did not want to see me at the top. Okay. You call it jealousy. You call it envy, whatever the fuck it is. My relationship with Scott Colton ended long before I paid all of his bills. I have every receipt. I have every invoice. I have every email. I have the email where he says, and I quote, I agree to go our separate ways. I will get my own lawyer and you do not have to pay anymore. That's an email that I have. The only reason the public did not see is because when I finally had to counter sue him through discovery, we discovered he shared a bank account with his mother. That's a fact. And as soon as we discovered that fact and we subpoenaed old Marsha, he sent the email oh can we please drop all this now it's 2022 i haven't been friends with this guy since at least 2014 late 2013 and the fact that i have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves evps and couldn't fucking manage a target uh young bucks and kenny omega (laughs) and they spread lies and bullshit and and put into a media that I got somebody fired when I have fuck all to do with him. Want nothing to do with him. Do not care where he works, where he doesn't work, where he eats, where he sleeps. And the fact that I have to get up here and do this in 2022 is fucking embarrassing. And if y'all are at fault, fuck you. If you're not, I apologize. But what did I ever do? in this world to go to deserve an empty headed fucking dumb fuck like hangman adam page to go out on national television and fucking go into business for himself for what what did i do dave what did i ever do didn't do a goddamn thing (laughs) well 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 so uh after his uh media scrum swerving our glory uh did their media scrum 
and uh, people asked them, should should they? Someone asked them, wasn't Dave Meltzer that should they uh, made a, a, a audible and put the belts on the claim uh, because the crowd was so into them that they should have uh, did a, did an audible and, and changed the finish. But now I'm thinking that what you're said that it's going to happen that they're going to be uh, champions in New York. So th- that's yeah, more yeah. better than than all out. So as as swerving our glory, uh, uh, media scrum was going on. Security was running in the back. What happened was a fight broke out between uh, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and CM Punk. Now, do you think fist was thrown, or was it like a pushing and shoving? Oh, I think I think fist was definitely thrown. Okay, uh, so. Supposedly, it was uh, in front of uh, AEW's uh, legal. I, I, I think it's a woman, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That it was. She's uh, uh, also works for. Th- here's another thing that I think is wrong too. They got a lot of people that's that's uh, working AEW and doing the football. No, you're going to have to hire just one person for 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 each. Uh, Working in legal is a handful when you dealing with wrestlers and you dealing with football players and a team. Mm-hmm. Now nah, that's a little bit too much. So supposedly it was in front of uh, legal. So um, uh, who bit who? Did did uh, a steel? Did Kenny Omega bite a a steel? No, a, no. Um, that's that's the opposite. A steel bit Kenny Omega. Oh, okay. Okay, because uh. Kenny Omega, uh, uh, well, he thought that Ace Steel was going to crossface him, which is a crossface uh, submission. Well, a choke. Just let's just put it like that. He thought he was going to choke him, so I, I guess he was trying to pull him apart. Maybe it might have been tight, or maybe he was trying to choke him, and uh, he bit him. So AEW suspended the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Christopher Daniels. Um, what's the uh uh? The guy that hangs with the Young Bucks name. Um, uh, Brandon Cutler. Yeah, Brand- Brandon Cutler. CM Punk was suspended. Well, he supposedly hurt. If he got hurt, I think he got hurt from fighting. I don't think he got hurt during a match. They said it was during a match, but how can you you tear your boss up and get in the fight? Yeah, I, I think that happened. I think that happened during during the match. Um, he, mm. tore, he, he tore his, uh, he tore his uh, tricep or whatever. or But... Yeah. I, uh, God, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and before you go any further, um, with the, with the media scrum, CM Punk, he, that wasn't a work. He, no, I didn't think so. No, that wasn't a work. He, he was shooting. Right, because um, first of all, first of all, with the Cocabana, who said that he was fired? Because like we said, he just worked the uh, the video game show in, in Germany. Yeah. Uh, from what was said that uh, Punk, I mean, Punk had him fired. And I guess from for whatever reason, uh, it, it, it was Punk saying that that uh, that the young buck for Kenny Omega had had something to do with it, right? Which, nah, which which I I I seriously doubt, but you know that's that's wrestling dirt sheets for you though. Know. Right now, here's a question for you. Uh, now, young bucks and Kenny Omega—they're not just wrestlers; they're also executive vice presidents, as we just mentioned. Now. Executive vice presidents can't be getting involved in fist fights. <laughs> so, no, when they get back from suspension, what would you do to them? Oh man! All right. If I was Tony Khan, I like mm-hmm. we I talked about this at work. I if if it was me, I would strip. I would strip them of of. EV, uh, of EVP duties. I yes. said the same thing. Yes. Yes. I. I is it controversial? Uh, it, it probably will be. Um, but you know, I don't think that 
with with that. If you're if if you're gonna if you're gonna wrestle, just just wrestle, you know. Right. But you you can't you can't you can't have both both your hands. You can't have both your hands in the cookie jar. You can't you can't you know. You can't be an executive vice president and and wrestle. You, right. It's gonna have to be one or the other. So and and I don't think that. I honestly don't think that the Bucks. I don't think the Bucks and King Omega should should be EVPs. I think they should be, you know, wrestlers. Right. I agree. I said the same thing. You can't be a Zeta Vice President and get in a fist fight backstage. I mean, no. And they need to be stripped of. Uh, uh, I'll have them back, of course. I wouldn't release anyone, but. Those guys, uh, executive vice president, no. Uh, executive vice president is like a booking committee, right? <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. All right, so is Jim Ross too old to book? No. Okay, no what about Taz? No. It, it, let me tell you something. You, like I said, Jim Ross, Taz, Martin Henry, you know, Jeremy, uh, Jerry Lynn, uh, Dean Malenko. You know, if you you AEW has the greatest mind of 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 pro wrestling right now, right? You know, hell, Jim Ross would probably Jim Ross can probably book a match in his sleep. Mm-hmm. So uh, no. Uh, He's not. He's not old. So he's not old and um, too old to to book shows. Hell, hell, if I was him, I, hell, I Tony Khan, I told him book the damn book the shows, man, make it look presentable. You know? Right. So, All right. Now, would it be a conflict of interest if Taz is a, in a booking committee? No. Okay. No. Uh, I mean, hell, they already. They already ran that well dry with with the buff and Omega, so right. You know, you have you have you have uh, um, you have Omega World Champion. He was an EVP. You have you have the Bucks. Um, they were tag team champions. The three of them were. Word to your tank championship. I, mean, I know you will get into that later. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They they were trios champions. So that so that 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 well is ran dry. So yes. I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't mind having Taz as, as part of the book uh, booking staff. Okay, now would you do? Uh, okay, you don't want. You think that. Uh, <coughs> The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega should be stripped as executive vice presidents. Now, would you uh, kind of do... Uh, okay, let's just say that uh, the people that you mentioned, Demon Lingo, Jerry Lynn, Taz, Jim Ross, they're, they're the new uh, booking committee. Now, would you kind of do sort of uh, the titles, uh, uh, the, the trios titles in the world championships, they're vacant. Would you kind of sort of do a reset... Well, okay. There, if, if if that was yeah, yeah, I probably would. I mm-hmm. probably would only because you know the show was on. The show was on on Sunday. Uh, yeah, all all that happened Sunday night. You have investigations Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The show, you know, you know. You know something's gonna happen. You know something was. I know something has to happen. Something has to give. You can't have a show without without a, without a champion. Right. You know. That's that's like that's like you know playing in the NBA with with no head coach. Mm-hmm. Or so. But um, yeah. You you have you have to you would have to do a a hard reset on if it was me, I would do a hard reset on the titles. 
on well not 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 necessarily kill tech is basically brand new. Um, but the the world the world heavyweight championship, yeah, absolutely. You got to do a hard reset. Now, uh, does this hard reset that you would do would this involve a tournament like they're doing now? Yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put I wouldn't put none of those. Well, I'll put maybe one or two of those guys into the tournament, but not you know not all of them. Mm-hmm. I think I think personally, I would think I would put two uh, two guys out of that eight uh, in there. Right. Let me, let me pull something. Up. Let me check. Uh, um, uh, give me just a second. Tournament of Champions. Yeah, um, if it if it was me, let me see, let me see what it got. Heyman Page, Brian Danielson. Yeah, I would keep Heyman Page and Brian Danielson in there. Not Chris Jericho, not John Moxley, not Darby Allen, not Sammy Guevara. Definitely not Sammy Guevara. <laughs> but, uh, um, nah, it's like you say, it's because you know it's, the next champ is either going to be Brown Danielson or Jericho. No, I, no, the next person, the next, next person is either going to be John Moxley or Chris Jericho. Like I said, it's in Arthur Ashe, Arthur Ashe Stadium. They mm-hmm. won't. They want their big time. They want their big time. Uh, like a big name, a, right? Yeah. yeah All right. A, so you a, don't think Brown Dancing name is bigger than Moxie? Absolutely. But I, like I said, I know that's not going to happen. Well, see, this can work in the play now because of the, the low blow from All Out. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, you know, well, I was booking it now. <coughs> they're predictable. Uh, I, um, they're predictable. I, I can, I'm watching. I can watch the plays right now. Uh, yeah. Um, you're gonna have. you I think what Heyman. Heyman lost to Danielson. Guevara beat. Yeah. So something's gonna happen where Danielson gets cheated out of the uh out of the title. And you know, John Mox is gonna dominate over Sammy Guevara. That's just that's just a you know that's just a beeline for uh Jericho Moxley number three. Right. Or four or five or whatever. It it's become it. Moxley and, uh, Moxley and Jericho is becoming the John Cena and Randy Orton of uh, AEW. Right. And, <laughs> and, see, and see, I think that's too much. It's too much. Too much it, it's too much then. It was too much then, it's too much now. So. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Raw after Class of the Castle, we got New Day New Day Alpha Academy and Lost Lotheros and Street Profits went to a no contest when your boy Braun Strowman interfered. Uh, they should have, and they should have never dropped him from the beginning anyway. But mm. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> we got Raquel, uh, Raquel Gonzalez and Aaliyah, uh, women's tag team champions, be Nikki Ash and Dewdrop. Uh, they butchered Rodriguez bad too. She she should have been up there with with the top women, but she was uh, butchered. Give it time. Give it time. She is. She is a main. I, I believe Rodriguez is a main event star in the making. Exactly. Um, and I she mean, was I, there. She was there after the Ronda Rousey uh, matches. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Give, yeah. Give, give her time. Um. I think they're going. I think they're going to do her like the next Bianca Belair. So you know, 
All I'm gonna say just 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 relax just relax about Rodriguez for a couple months. Mm-hmm. So they go they won't put a rocket ship on her back. She's gonna she's gonna shoot up there. Uh, we got Austin Owens beat Austin Theory with a. I'm I'm sorry, Kevin Owens beat Austin Theory with a stunner. A good match there. Uh, we got Damian Priest beat Rey Mysterio with the South of Heaven. Uh, like I said, you will never see a, a bad Rey Mysterio match. He's always he's always in the same spot. He's always spot. He never misses a spot. He never does anything bad in the ring. I mean, he's not the Rey Mysterio old, of course, but you'll never see a bad Rey Mysterio match. Uh, Bobby Lachey beat The Miz with a spear in a cage match. I thought it was stupid. Uh, I fast forward through that. I thought that was uh, mm-hmm. I never really liked The Miz much anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. Dynamite at the Dynamite at the All Out. Uh, like Josh said, that uh, Tony Khan came on and stripped the well, the 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 stripped the world title because CM Punk was uh uh injured and they stripped the trios uh title as we just mentioned they they didn't say why he just said he just stripped it so we got uh the death triangle beat the best friends when uh uh Pac did the black arrow on uh taylor and i thought that was a good match too well you're not gonna see a bad match between those those uh three uh mm-hmm. you got Tony Storm beat beat Penelope Ford with a jump of DET. Penelope Ford got better also, or maybe because just Tony Storm was that good. And and Penelope Ford wasn't on TV, have been on TV in a while. Yeah, that's because of Kit Sabian. Yeah. We got Warlow beat Tony Nish. We already knew that what was going to happen. Uh, Warlow Goldberg did his powerbomb. Uh, did he do four powerbombs on Tony Nish? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. We got uh Brown Dance and B. Hammond Page. That was a tournament match, right? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, good match there. And we got Daniel Garcia be Will Yuta with a Dragon Slayer. That was for the uh, R A R O H Pure Championship. Uh Daniel Garcia wins it. So uh I didn't see uh SmackDown and Rampage on Friday, did you? No, uh uh-uh. uh. Uh, like I said, I kept up with the highlights, but yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't see it neither, so I can't really say. But uh, Dynamite was, after All Out, the Dynamite one was better than the Raw after the uh, Clash of the Castle. The main event was, uh, the, the, the Raw wasn't bad. I just didn't like that main event. It, it, uh, that's stupid. Uh, with the, um, what's the guy name that was underneath the apron? Oh, Dex Loomis. Yeah, Dexter Loomis with the stare and Miz supposed to be all scared and all that stuff. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was ridiculous because you easily could have just jumped out out of the cage and just ran away. And then if you were scared, you wouldn't just stand there and, and frozen. <laughs> yeah, that didn't make no sense there. But no, it, uh, it, 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 it 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 like I said, you know, it made for good content, I guess. Right. Uh, another thing, do you uh you ever looked at a starter stardom show? Um, what's that? Um, no, um, I, you know what, though? I, I try, but there's no, I can't find it, you know? Can't find I, it anywhere around here. I sing you a, a link to it, but Star, I mean, those women, uh, since, since, AEW was in with New Japan. They got to do something with bringing some of those women over there. Even the the undercard ladies, they're like just so solid in the ring. And uh, I only I haven't seen every Stardom show, but the shows I looked at, I was always entertained. Yeah, like I said, I could I can't make um I can't make heads or tails about it uh, with with Stardom. Um, I think what um they're they're intertwined with New Japan Pro Wrestling, right? Yes. The same company okay. owned by the same. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, um, yeah. So they gotta bring uh or or bring or send some of the women, AEW women that's like on a the the uh I'm trying to think of one. Um trying to think of someone they can send what's the uh the real i don't know her name but she's like really skinny um they need to send her over there oh, i can't she's always on dark always on dark or elevation one of those she's like really on uh dynamite or rampage 
No, no, no. She's white. No, uh, she's white. No. no, 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 not her. She's awesome. I like her. Uh, no, 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 not her. This, this is a young, young girl. Mm-hmm. This is one of the homegrown uh, uh, women. They got. She's always on Dynamite or, or no, no. I mean, I'm sorry. She's always on Elevation or Rampage. She's rarely on TV. Uh, uh, yeah, they need to send her over there. And I think that they should send um, Dwayne Martin and next year's New Japan Top of the Juniors Tournament. Oh, yeah. Um, Dante Martin, yeah. Dante, yeah, 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 said Dwayne. Uh, yeah, they need to send him on the, the uh, next year's uh, Top of the Juniors Tournament. That'd be, that'd be good. That'd be good for him. But one thing I could say, those guys have been get, getting better. Since uh, they started when it was pan- the pandemic and was no crowd, and uh, especially especially the acclaim, because the acclaim wasn't really nothing other than after when uh, they got in the ring and the bell rung, you're into when they uh, when he does his rap, like you said. But other than that, um, when they got in the ring, I just always fast forward. But now they just they've gotten better. I mm-hmm. can't say, yeah. I um, you know what I I just realized as um media scrub thing with um with the elite and and uh and all that. Who do you in your mind? Who do you think came out smiling like roses? It, between those or the between those uh guys no, or? no no just all together all together i would think uh cm punk is going to be a bigger star than when he gets uh healed up and everything he'll be a bigger no. star than everybody no i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you uh, i'm gonna tell you who, can, who, who who i'm gonna tell you right now who's coming out who's coming out like you know like a like a star, and, and you and, you, and you're and you're gonna be surprised when I say who Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Why <laughs> Cody Cody Rhodes? I believe on the wall with those guys. Mm-hmm. With um with with. Um, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. I, I honestly believe that, uh, and I feel like that. Cody Rhodes was like, "Oh, I need to get my, I need to get my ass up out of here before something drastic happens." Now he, like I said, I'm not saying he's a fortune teller. I'm not saying you know he saw the writing from. I, I'm not saying that he that he saw this coming, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he saw something bad. Something bad was was uh, coming around, mm-hmm. and, and Cody Rose uh, stop. You know, Rose uh, was on the rise when he was when he was in AEW. So you know, right. he can't he can't stand. But get get back to my point though. Cody Rose must have saw something that we that. That the viewers at home didn't see, mm-hmm. so, and I bet Cody Rose is at home right now, laughing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you it sound right too. It sound yeah. right. Yeah, he he laughed his ass off right now. And I don't, and I don't blame him. Not one bit, not one single solitary bit. So you think that a- AEW is in that much disarray? Because it's easy to clean up. It's easy to clean up what we said. Like you said, the people's already there. Yeah, yeah. It, no, it's no. You it's you can clean it up. Um, the clean up part is not is not the is is not the issue. It was you know. I think for Cody Rhodes, he saw he saw what's that term? What's that uh, phrase? I think he saw the forest from the trees, mm-hmm. and so you know, 
he ain't want nothing to do with that no more. So <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You you probably you 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 probably you probably that that Monday night that Tuesday night eating chicken wings, laughing his laughing <laughs> his nuts off. <laughs> he saw it. He he he. He saw this come up or he seen something that we didn't see. Mm-hmm. Uh the young bucks are having all their friends over, putting mm-hmm. all their friends over. That probably might have mm-hmm. something to do with it. Because look who's yeah. there. It's pretty much everybody's there. It's pretty much all the young bucks' friends. Yeah, and, and, and think about it. Think, think about this right here. Um, if you've seen within the last, I don't know, three or four months, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say that it was like significantly bad, but how the booking in in the AEW shows were like like you know all all jacked up. Um matter of fact, I'll give you I'll give you a perfect example. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh what two, three weeks ago. Dynamite, you know, Dynamite's a two-hour show. Mm-hmm. Why at the top of hour one that you put that you put the world championship match uh, at that time in, in, in main event in, in the main event you put a trios trios match as the main event at the at the end of the show, who does that? See, that see, you mentioned that before, and see, I was thinking that uh, they shouldn't have had the trios match. I agree with you; that trio match shouldn't have been on the card. What they should have did, okay, they started at the top of hour, right? You automatically think like, oh, it's going to be a long match. We're going to have a long classic match here, and they ended it early, make it seem like you know that. Uh, the match can end at any time, that sort of thing. But what they should have did is not put, like you said, they shouldn't have put that. Uh, y- you you probably are too young to remember um, NWA back in the day. See, they used to do this. They used to uh, they used to have matches, and the matches end early. And then they'll say, "Well, hey, we have our impromptu match here. Since you know the time limit, uh, since we have time, we'll add in." They'll say that on the air. So oh. that's the way they should have done it. And that, but that's all well and good. All I'm saying is, all I, I, like I said, I'm an old, I'm an old school, I'm an old school kind of guy when it comes to like booking shows or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Who in the hell do do you? Who in the hell put that plan up to put the world title at in the middle of in the middle of the show, then put a nine title match at the end at the at, as the main event of the show. I'll take it I'll take it a step I'll take it a step further than that. Who was who was the booking agent um for all in out but all in the, the show that started it all. It was uh Rhodes and the Bucks, right? No, it was just Cody Rhodes. Oh, okay. I thought the Bucks uh booked. They 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 had they had a hand in it. They they, mm-hmm. they probably had they probably had a hand, but Cody Rhodes was the main booker for that show. All I'm saying all I'm saying is this. So Cody Rhodes was in, to my mind and I think to everybody else's mind was the brain was the brains behind all the elite wrestling. Right, Tony Tony Khan was the is the money behind all of Lee. Now you now you got Cody Rhodes gone. He he's off in the, he he's up he's up he's up north like a like a free slave, but doing <laughs> his thing and <laughs> but. And so I'm saying, so I, me personally, I would not put, I would not put, you know, if I, if I'm gonna put a title match 
if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do a title match, especially the World Heavyweight Ch- Championship with John Moxley and CM Punk, I'm putting them as the main event. That's that's the that's the match that you want to do uh, as far as as the end of a show. I don't care how 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 long or how or how quick the show is. Like I said, the tri- I like I said, don't get me wrong. That trio match with uh, the Elite and uh, and the United Empire was spectacular. But like I said that deserves its five stars. That deserves all it wrote. Mm-hmm. But you don't you but you you don't put don't put you know you don't put your prize horses uh in the back like that. It's or in the middle of a pack. It's just it's it just it to me looks stupid. To me it looks like you know, whoever booked that show didn't know what they were doing. Right, and Cody and Cody Rhodes, and Cody Rhodes is laughing it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh, what's uh, what's your social media? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, um, TikTok, uh, the Big Stat, uh. Matter of fact, you can find find me on Facebook, uh, Josh Evans. Um, other than that, that's all I got right now. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and, and Snapchat. I'm under the um, underscore the big stat. So. Uh. Hey, you can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at PNO Judgmentals, Instagram at the two underscores Judgmentals, and you can email us at PNO Judgmentals at gmail dot com. All right, Josh. Thanks for joining us, and go ahead and do your uh, your your outro. Oh my goodness! Get your <laughs> mind right. Get your stats up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, man. I'll see you. <laughs> All right.